Uh, today we'll just look at uh, the impact of electric fields on charged particles. For example, we're going to look at the final velocity of an electron when it's accelerated through an electric field. So this topic, you know, connects to kinematics and sometimes it's very difficult for students. So let me show you how to get the formulas first. First of all, electric field strength is defined as the force acting on a test charge divided by the test charge. So E is F by Q. That means F is QE. So the force on a charged particle is going to be the product of the charge and the electric field in which it is situated. So if it's an electron, you've got to multiply it with the charge of the electron and the electric field. Now once we get the force, we can calculate the acceleration. By Newton's second law, the acceleration is just net force divided by mass. So in this case, we got to divide this force by the mass of the electron, if we are talking about an electron. So once you have the acceleration, we can now use kinematic formulas to find the final velocity or the time it takes, etc. So let me show you how that is done. Let's say this is an electric field set up by two parallel plates and the red arrow now shows the direction of the electric field. Remember that the direction of the electric field is the direction along which a positive charge would move. So now suppose there is an electron right here that is already moving with a certain velocity. So it has an initial velocity along that direction. Let's call it V0. So because of the electric field, is the electron going to be accelerated or will it be decelerated? Well, the electron is a negative charge, so the force acting on the electron will be opposite to the field, which means its velocity is going to decrease. It's going to be decelerated. And to calculate that, let's assume that the electric field is 10,000 newtons per coulomb. And let the initial velocity be 10 to the power 7 meter per second. And I'm going to show you what happens if the initial velocity is 10 to the power 7. Okay? So we can calculate the acceleration using QE by M, where Q is the charge of the electron, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 times uh, 10,000 divided by the mass of the electron, which is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. And all this will be given. So you get 1.76 times 10 to the 15 meter per second, meter per second squared. So now if you're asked to find the final velocity with which the electron hits the plate B or reaches the plate B, uh, you got to have the distance here, which I'm going to assume to be 50 millimeters. All right. And the force acting on the electron, as I've explained, is opposite to the direction of the electric field by definition. And so now you can find the uh, final velocity using this formula from kinematics. Vf squared is V0 squared plus 2A delta X or delta y. So if delta x is 50 millimeter, you, we can use this formula. The initial velocity is 10 to the 7, which is what I've assumed. And then I'm not going to get the answer. And I thought I should leave it at 10 to the 7 and explain why we're not going to get the answer. 
because when I use this and when I put it into the calculator, first of all, you know why this is negative, right? This is negative because we know it's not actually acceleration, it's deceleration. Why? Because the force is against the motion. So the electron is moving up and the force is against the velocity. So that's why it's decelerating. That's why A is negative and that makes this negative. So now mathematically, this negative quantity is bigger than the positive quantity. Which means when you take the square root, a negative number doesn't have a square root. Well, it's going to be imaginary. So what does that mean? Well, that's interesting because that means that the force on the electron is so big that its deceleration caused it to return before it hit the plate B. So it's like it gets there, slows down, and then returns. Now, since we're trying to find the velocity with which it reaches the plate B, and it does not actually reach the plate B, you're going to get a negative value. So since I want the problem to work, and now you should have understood that the initial velocity was not enough, so I'm going to change that. I'm going to say let the initial velocity be 5 times 10 to the 7 meter per second. Okay, so that is enough for it to reach plate B. And now mathematically, uh, we, we have a positive quantity. So when you do the calculations, you get Bf squared as 5.64 times 10 to the 14. When you take the square root, of course now it's positive, so you get a square root. You're going to get 2.37 times 10 to the 7 meter per second. So that's fairly understandable. So remember, you got a f uh, to find the force, then find the acceleration or the deceleration, and then use kinematics. I hope this makes sense. Thank you.